New video is out today showing for the first time an inside look at a Guantanamo Bay interrogation. The video shot in 2003 shows a 16-year-old detainee being interrogated by Canadian authorities. It's released today by the detainee's lawyers who say their client was abused. In the video you can see him showing the interrogator injuries. And tonight a new book suggests the top military leader at Guantanamo believed that half of the detainees were not dangerous. It's probably the most comprehensive look at the prison and the American war on terror. The new book is called The Dark Side by Jane Mayer. It includes details of torture techniques, detainees being forced to wear women's underwear and dog leashes, being kept in cages, force-fed liquids, and kept from toilets. Plus allegations that the approval of these techniques went far up the Bush administration chain of command. In one passage, Mayer quotes an attorney from the Justice Department who says, quote, it was like ethics were out the window. After 9-11, we were bending ethics to feed, fit our needs. Something wrong was going on. It wasn't just fishy, it stank. Mayer is a Washington staff writer and investigative reporter for The New Yorker, and she joins us now. Thanks very much for taking the time. We appreciate it. Really glad to be with you. All right, so what, what I think when a lot of people think about this issue of torture, they think of waterboarding, and they say, all right, there was a debate over waterboarding, and that's what the administration means, that's what people mean, critics mean, when they're talking about uh, torture. But your book alleges a lot more than that. Well, you know, but I've been told that, that really the country's focused too much on waterboarding. It's just one part of a, a much larger program, and the program consisted of, of a whole combination of techniques, which is what really was, according to people who gotten close to this program that's what was really so particularly harrowing for people they would they would do many different things at once over a long period of time and one of the ironies that I have learned about as I was trying to research this was most of the techniques that America wound up using were things that that we were emulating that had been created by the communist regimes in the past that that the United States considered its enemies let me, I want to read something else which I found stunning uh, from your book. James Comey, a guy I have a lot of respect for, um, was a John Ashcroft Deputy Attorney General. And um, an Assistant Attorney General, Jack Goldsmith, had been butting heads with the administration over the NSA spying program. And you write the following. They were both so paranoid by then, they actually thought they may be in physical danger. Goldsmith and Comey, who knew more about the domestic surveillance program than practically anyone else in America, also feared that their communications were being monitored. You're, so you're saying that literally two of the highest level members of the Justice Department not just thought that their own conversations might be tapped, but they might be hurt or killed? <laughs> Well, I, it, it, it sounds funny. It sounds like, you know, you, you couldn't make this stuff up, though, really. Um, it, it, some of the things that were going on inside of the White House were like something out of some kind of thriller, or it, as Frank Rich wrote in the uh, New York Times, it was kind of like The Final Days, the, the, the book by Woodward and Bernstein. There, there were very intense emotional moments inside the White House about the torture program. And you're right, Jim Comey is, I think, in many ways a, a hero in this administration. He's a Republican lawyer inside. He was the number two in the Justice Department. And I, I think the same can be said of Jack Goldsmith, who was running the Office of Legal Counsel, who went on to teach at Harvard yeah. Law School. And the two guys tried to take on the vice president's office, and that really was the center of power on these programs and, in the White House. And, and Goldsmith is, is a real conservative. I mean, let's, let's be clear, but I, I want to uh, move on to something else that, that you write in the book. And this is about um, a CIA agent sent to Guantanamo, finds that to find out why we weren't getting any good intelligence uh, from the detainees there. You write, the CIA officer was further disconcerted to learn that General Michael Dunleavy agreed with him that easily a third of the Guantanamo detainees were mistakes, Later, Dunleavy raised his estimate to fully half. There were mental cases and a few teenagers, one so demented he was eating his own feces. And then you write, when the White House got word that half of the detainees may have been there by mistake, that David Addington, this is uh, Dick Cheney's um, legal advisor, is the easiest way to, to say it in addition to a lot of other things, said, there will be no review. The president has determined that they are all enemy combatants. We are not going to revisit it. Now, are you certain from your reporting that Addington said that in response to finding out that a lot of the Guantanamo detainees may have been there by mistake? Well, it comes from, from two sources who agree on it who were in the meeting at the time. So I, it, it, it's, it, 
it, I've got to say that David Addington declined to be interviewed, so if he has another version of it, he hasn't been able to tell it, or, or he's been allowed to tell it, but he hasn't chosen to tell it. Um, it you know, the, the two people that were in the meeting that um, were trying to get the government to see if they could get these innocent people out of Guantanamo, one was a, a general who used to be a very high-level um, official in the CIA, and the other was John Bellinger, the top lawyer in the State Department now. These are not low-ranking people. These are yeah. people who have tremendous standing um, in the national security community. And they just felt basically it was wrong for the United States yep. to be locking up innocent people. But they couldn't get much uh, traction on this. The book is The Dark Side, and it's an important book. Jane Mayer, thanks very much for coming on. We appreciate it. Great to be here. Thanks. <laughs> Now an update in our Bush League Justice series, Congress lashing out at Karl Rove again tonight after Rove ignored yet another deadline. Rove failed to abide by a subpoena to appear before the House Judiciary Committee last week. Then the committee gave Rove until today to change his mind, saying we're really, 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 really serious. Tonight, committee member Linda Sanchez tells us, quote, as he let yet another deadline slip by today, Mr. Rove's disregard for Congress has become intolerable. Mr. Rove needs to understand he's not above the law and should obey a subpoena just like any other American is required to do.